Okay, I am back. Hi guys, it is Drew here from Lone Fox and I am back for my wisdom tooth removal process. If you guys didn't know, I actually got my wisdom teeth removed on Friday. Hi Lone Fox family. I just got out of my wisdom tooth surgery, already brainstorming my next DIY project, and I have so much in the works for you. Um, I actually feel perfectly fine. My mouth just so dry for some reason. So I'll be back soon and we can make more projects. It's currently Tuesday, so it's really only been like four days since I got them removed, but um, I feel like I just snapped back really quickly. It honestly wasn't too bad of a process at all, and I want to thank anyone who definitely left a comment on my last video, because I did mention in my last video that I was getting them out, and so many of you guys were so sweet and so kind. Like, there's over 500 comments literally in support and just letting me know like what to experience afterwards or what's going to happen afterwards, just like aftercare tips and things like that. So I really want to thank you guys so much who did leave a comment on that video. Now that the wisdom teeth are gone and the wisdom has also left my head, um, let's just get into today's video. While I was sitting in bed over the weekend, I really wanted to do a video on my desk space because I saw a couple of office renovations on YouTube and I really love them, but I really wouldn't consider this area a office. It can kind of be a miniature at home office, but this is just more of my desk space or my workspace. As many of you guys know, I do work full time from home. So I edit all my videos here. I'm constantly working in this area and I really wanted to share with you guys a couple of really amazing DIY tips and also some really fun hacks on how to just really make your space super functional but also very organized you can really just pack the most into the space um, without it actually looking super super crammed and if you are not already make sure to click that subscribe button below to join the Lone Fox family we are over 250,000 family members strong that is insane like I cannot believe we have that many people watching the videos but I just want to thank you guys so much I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week on this channel so definitely look forward to that and you can also follow me on Instagram it's Lone Fox home and I'm Drew Scott which is more my personal one just for more stuff about Mwah. Alrighty, so we are starting off with just the plain desk. I actually went ahead and removed everything from my desk. And if you are curious, my desk here is actually from Ikea as well. A lot of the stuff in this video is from Ikea. I'm a very avid Ikea shopper. I find Ikea to be a really great place to find very basic items that also serve a very functional purpose, such as storage. So the desk, I'll put it on the screen for you. I don't remember the exact name, but it is a bamboo desk and it has white legs on it. I absolutely love it. It does have three drawers on the front. They are very mini though. They don't serve the most when it comes to storage, but you can definitely put stuff in them like pens or pencils, erasers, office stationery stuff fits nicely in there because they are very shallow, but they kind of are cute at the same time. And I knew the first thing that I wanted to do was really elevate my monitor because the first thing about elevating your monitor is you're going to get your eyesight pointing upwards. So you're going to really like correct your posture first of all. And another great reason to do this is if you are on the taller side, like myself, I am six foot tall. Typically you have an, a longer torso area. So for me, this desk was a little bit on the shorter side, but when I elevated it, which you're going to see in just a second here, I actually was able to make it just a little bit higher and just make my posture better by looking up at the computer screen. So what I did was I actually used one of these super inexpensive wooden Ikea crates and I constructed it. But how I constructed it was I actually constructed it without one of the sides. So all you have to do is construct it, but just don't put one of the longer sides on. And guys, do not worry. This is extremely secure. It has extremely long screws as well. This is very, very strong. It's going to hold up your monitor. Um, and mine already decided that it wanted to fall off when there was an earthquake in Los Angeles, which was extremely rude. So I'm just giving it another opportunity to fall off. If it wants to fall off, it'll fall off anyways, because clearly it did the first time. I am just kidding. I'm not going to scream at my monitor anymore. Broke itself. Basically, I'm just creating a stand for this because what this is going to do is elevate the monitor, but it's also going to give me a place underneath to store stuff. So what I could store under here are bins. Um, I have this really cute mint green plastic bin I got at Ikea that fits perfectly under it. You can also add books under here if you want to add those. But another thing that you can do is if you do need more sort of like working space or desk space, let's say you're um, writing or maybe you're like, I don't know, working with clay or something like that. You use your desk for more crafty projects. This is a great place to store your keyboard and mouse while you are just kind of like working away. So I found that to be super easy as well. You can just kind of tuck them away and they are good to go. So it definitely serves two purposes. It gives you a little bit of storage space underneath and it also is going to correct posture and just elevate your monitor a bit more. So like I mentioned with you guys prior, my desk doesn't actually have the most storage. When I purchased this desk, I knew I wanted it to have a very minimal and clean look, which is why I got it. Um, it doesn't have any leg storage, which is basically where the sides of the desk have drawers, which a lot of desks do come like that um, and they are 
kind of more meant for people that do have a lot of like stationery or supplies they want to store in their desk. But I knew for my personal space, I wanted to go for something a little bit more minimal and clean. So I'm definitely going to maximize that storage working up the wall and also um, just on my desktop in general. So the first DIY project that we're actually going to be creating is a DIY cork board. And I'm using two basic items from Ikea, an oversized gallery frame, and I'm also going to be using a desk pad. And the desk pad is made from cork and it's super, super large. So I'm going to share with you guys how to create this super simple cork board. So the other tools and supplies I'm using are just an X-Acto knife, a pen, and a ruler. So what I'm starting off by doing is just opening up the frame how you typically would, uh, just to put a photo inside of it, but I'm pulling everything out of the frame because I want to start off with the matte piece. And as you can see, this matte is thicker at the top and bottom and it's thinner on the side. So I actually want to make it one consistent width all the way around. And that is two and one eighths inch. So on these top sections, I'm measuring down two and an eighth of an inch. And that's just going to correspond with those side sections. And I'm drawing a line because we're actually going to be cutting a chunk out of this mat just to give us the most surface space for our cork board. So this drawn in section here, this is actually what I'm going to be cutting out. And I'm using my X-Acto knife and a ruler just to go over these sections multiple times until it's kind of released from the actual piece. And this is just the easiest way to cut this out, I feel, to get the cleanest finish. And I'm repeating the same process on the other side as well. This is just going to, again, create a super simple and symmetrical border all the way around because now we are going to be taking our little uh, desk pad and placing it down and just using some masking tape just to tape it on the back side of the mat. And the reason I'm using masking tape is it's easily removable. If you wanna interchange this, if you wanted to paint your cork board, if you wanted to put a picture in it one day instead of a cork board, you're easily able to remove this. So I just constructed it back how it's typically supposed to be constructed, push those little tabs down. And that is basically how you finish this DIY little little wall cork board. It turned out so cute and you can hang it on the wall. You can put whatever you want on it, whether it be um, some to-do lists, just inspirational photos, really anything. So now that we have the cork board all hung up, you can really pin whatever you want on there and you can also make this to whatever size you would like. Ikea has tons of different frames. If you're a visual person like me, I like to see my to-do list and just like I like to see inspiration in general. So I think this is a great place to just interchange those items as the weeks progress. So I took a step back and I looked at my desk and I realized that there was a lot of brown tones going on. So there was that cork, but there was also just the desk wood in general, the bamboo top. The next item I was going to put on the wall was one of the Ikea pegboards. But the thing about the Ikea pegboard is that it was also made of the same kind of brown cardboardy cork material, like, or look color wise. So I decided that I wanted to actually paint this. So this is a super cute little pegboard. I love that you can grab these at Ikea because it doesn't require you to go to a hardware store and cut down a larger one. And they also do have a ton of different little interchangeable items that you can put on it, whether it be like pencil cups or hooks or whatever they want to be. What I did with my cork board was I just gave it a nice coating of paint. I did two total coats of light sage paint, and this is from Americana, I believe. But I did two coats of this because I did the mint tone to kind of translate back to that plastic bin that's underneath the monitor. So I decided to also do my pegboard in the mint color. But if you would like to, you can also do a simple white, a simple black. You can even do like a fun one, like a brown if you wanted to spray it with a brass spray paint whatever your heart desires you can definitely customize your pegboard but I knew I didn't want a ton of brown which is why I decided to paint that pegboard just so it was a little bit different than all of the other brown tones in our kind of desk space so I went ahead and I added on the kind of pegboard accents which include little hooks there's also one for your papers it's kind of like a paper bent bar area um, I also added a little clip and then I also loved these super super cute little plastic clear bins and I I love the fact that it kind of acts as both a shelf and a bin because when you put it on there the bin actually pulls out and you can use the top of that portion as a little shelf so I added a couple of crystals just to sort of add a little bit of decoration to the pegboard but you can add whatever you want to this I love how you can also really switch it up and really add or take away the little uh, pieces that go on the pegboard because sometimes you might not want as much as you had prior or maybe you want to add some more storage to it whatever you want to do I definitely do think that the two projects on the wall serve a great functionable sort of storage element but they also also are really pretty and cute. I think that the frame kind of really frames off and makes that cork board very nice and finished. And then also the mint green on the other side just kind of gives a pop of color. And overall, I think if you add very pretty kind of stationary supplies to this, 
more open section and then put like your more uglier bills and just like things you don't want to see in the actual storage drawers or storage boxes. That's the best way to do it. But we are now moving back to the actual desk tabletop. So on the desk, I wanted to share with you, these are some super cute little cork boxes also from Ikea. They come in a pack of three and I was going to paint them white originally, but I ended up just leaving them that cork color. I felt like the cork on the actual cork board was going to be covered up by a lot of inspirational images. So I figured I might as well keep some of that cork element somewhere else in the actual design of this desk space. I also feel like when we added that box under the monitor, which kind of elevated the height, it gave us so much more storage space underneath because before, if this was just directly on top of the desk, as you can see guys, there's really only about two inches of space here. I um, mean, this fills up almost the whole desk. So when we added this little crate here, it actually gave us probably about eight or nine inches of storage space underneath, which gives us space for these super cute little boxes and also this little pen and pencil container here. And then moving over to the other side of the desk, I just went ahead and I added some more decorative options. I added the cute little Himalayan salt lamp. When I am working at night, I like to just keep my Himalayan salt lamp on and just turn all the lights off and I kind of like edit in the dark, but I still have that nice warm glow from the salt lamp. And then next to it, I added a little trinket bowl. This was from Anthropology. Um, and it just has some of my earrings in it. So if I wanted to take off jewelry while I'm working or something like that, or just throw some headphones in there, whatever I wanted to do, I just wanted a little catch-all bowl on my desk as well. And guys, that was kind of my little home office desk, little renovation DIY video for you guys. I hope you did enjoy and I hope this can also give you some really great ideas for your own personal space. Maybe you work in an office, but you want to just maximize your storage, but also keep your space super cute at the same time. I hope that this could give you some ideas and I will make sure to link everything that I did use in the description box below for you guys so you can take a look at that. And I think that that is really all. I do want to also apologize if I was talking extremely quick because I feel like sometimes I do talk super quickly. I need to cut down on that for sure, but if you need to, feel free to watch the video over again. And you can also always click that little icon down there, the little gear, and turn down the speed of me talking. It might make me sound normal for once. Anyways, I will catch you all in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe for brand new content every single week and turn on that little bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I upload brand new videos. And for more behind the scenes type stuff, I do have an Instagram. It is Lone Fox Home. And my personal one is I'm Drew Scott, where I post more of my outfits and just like more of myself. So if you want to see more of me, follow me over there but I will not keep you guys any longer have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you next one bye guys <laughs>